Body Piercing in the Military. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 73. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you a level of expertise as somebody that's been in the industry for well over 26 years. So today's topic, we're going to talk about the military, what it's allowed, what's not allowed, some of the regulations, some of the things you should consider if you are in the military and thinking about getting a piercing. Um, basically, I have pierced a number of people in all the uh, various arms branches of the military service at one point or, it's, or another, and it's been kind of mixed results as far as what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. The bottom line is that... There is regulations in place for body piercing. You should know these. You should look these up before you consider getting pierced. They do change on a regular basis. The same thing goes for tattoos. They've been changing those off and on. It seems for the last 10 years, it's, it, it's gone from just everything's okay as long as you don't your hands or face to only a certain percentage, only a certain type, what type is acceptable, what et cetera. So that's an entirely different subject. Um, and uh, maybe we'll cover that on the tattoo side at some point. What When you're thinking about getting this done, a lot of it comes down to your position, um, where you're at, what your rank is, what your uh, main assignment is, etc. of whether or not it's going to be acceptable or not, and whether or not you can get away with it. Uh, personally, the guy that I apprenticed under was a military guy. He was in the Air Force uh, and had numerous piercings, and it never affected his service in any way, shape, or form other than his navel getting torn during some exercises. Um, that was the 90s. Uh, piercing was brand new. They've gotten a little bit wiser to what the heck is going on. So, always understand that this could get you in trouble if you get pierced while in the military. Um, one of the main things is, is as a member of the military armed forces, you are required under contract to keep yourself in a healthy state. Piercings can cause problems in that direction. It can get you in a way that you're not going to be ready for duty. You could get sick, you get an infection, you could get other problems. So always take that into account that this could cause some serious problems in your military career. Now, uh, there are a number of reasons why I would suggest personally not getting a piercing done, and we're going to go through some of those. Uh, when you're being assigned to a war zone, obviously, I would not, not suggest getting a piercing right before you're about ready to ship out. Um, if you have tri training that's coming up that's going to involve camping out or being in the outdoors or some type of survival training, not a good time to get pierced. When you're being assigned to a part of the world that's a third world or where hygiene daily is not going to be available, you're not going to be able to shower every day, etc., not a good idea to get pierced. When you have a physical or some type of inspection coming up where they're going to be a little, we're going to be a little bit more under that magnifying glass, not a good time to get a piercing. When you're getting stationed in an area of the world where piercings are either prohibited or just plain look down on. Entering into this area, you're already going to be a foreign person. You're always already going to have the stigma that is attached to being uh, a foreign power and all that other fun stuff. Having a piercing on top of that is just going to increase the likelihood of issues you're going to have with the population of that country. Last two is, if you're going to be in a situation where you're not going to have access to sterile saline solution, and you're not going to have access to medical assistance, uh, depending on the situation. This goes back to war zones, et cetera. But if you're going to be in a situation where you're pretty much out on your own and you're not going to be able to find saline solution or even have the ability to clean it properly or take care of it properly, and if something comes up, you, you pretty much 
maybe two, 300 miles away from the closest medic, not a good idea to get pierced. The last one is if, it, if the particular piercing is going to interfere with your ability to complete your service, if it is going to impede you in any way, shape, or form with your responsibilities. An example of this would be if you have to crawl on your belly and you go out and get your nipples pierced or a navel piercing, or maybe you're in communications and you decide it's a good idea to get a tongue piercing. If it's going to cause problems or issues with how you can perform your duties, I would not suggest getting the piercing done. Now, every branch has its own regulations. I'm going to kind of briefly go over what I've found. Like I said in the beginning, this could have changed in just the period of time it's taken for me to do this video to whatever day you're watching this. Let's start with the Air Force. We'll go alphabetical. Um, so I'm just going to read this off as best as I can. So bear with me. <laughs> Members are prohibited from attaching, affixing, or displaying objects, articles, jewelry, or ornament to or through the ear, nose, or any exposed part, um, including visible through uniform. Exception are women authorized to wear small, spherical, conservative, diamond, gold, white pearl, silver, pierced, clipped ear, uh, earring, earring, uh, per lobes. The ear and the earring must uh, worn on each lobe must match. Earrings should not uh, should fit tightly without being without extending below the earlobe. Exception is connected band clip rings, um, earrings. So basically, what they're saying is no. <laughs> um, there's kind of a loophole there with the Air Force that maybe if you had a piercing that's below the neck that is invisible, you might get away with it. You're not going to get away with additional ear piercings, uh, trachuses and all those wonderful different types, industrials, uh, because they are visible. So that moves us on to the army. Uh, when in an army installation or other place army controls, soldiers may not attach, affix, or display objects, articles, jewelry, adornment, or ornament to or through the skin while they are in uniform, in civilian clothing on duty, or in civilian clothes off duty. This includes earrings for male soldiers. The only exception is female soldiers um, indicated in paragraph 1-14D uh, below. The term skin is not confined to external skin, but includes tongues, lips, inside the mouth, other surfaces of the body not readily visible. So basically, it's flat out prohibited to wear anything but uh, for females to wear earrings, and that's it. Um, off duty, it's kind of a little vague, but still, and that moves us on to the coast guard. Uh, coast guard tends to be kind of the more, it's a little bit more descriptive and a little bit more liberal to a degree. No piercing other than earrings as described below will be made through the ear, nose, tongue, cheek, eyebrow, or any other part of the body that would be visible while in uniform. This prohibited, uh, prohibits, uh, uh this, this pro, this probation applies to male and female members alike and is specifically intended to limit the less than military appearance associated with vacant holes of the face or other exposed parts of the body. Ear piercings may not exceed two per lobe and must be small and inconspicuous. Additionally, earlobes and cartilage piercings are prohibited or additional earlobes. I'm sorry. So you can't have more than one is basically what they're getting at. Uh, console reference for guidance regarding women wearing earrings and uniforms. Uh, B, piercings concealed by the uniform, such as navels and nipples, are strongly discouraged due to the potential for infection and medical complica complications. Under no circumstances will such concealed piercings or accompanying uh, jewelry be visible through or interfere with the personal appearance or performance of the member in uniform. Nor shall uh, well, sh nor will such jewelry be visible while on board a Coast Guard unit, including while in civil dress or civilian dress. Sorry, and it goes on. 
All members are prohibited from wearing forms of facial jewelry other than earrings for women while in uniform, on board a military installation, or while attending command-sponsored events. Persons with pre-existing unauthorized piercings must discontinue use of those piercings to allow eventual healing. Questionable cases should be re uh, referred to the com uh, commandant for further determination. So basically what they're saying is you might be able to get away with uh, piercings below the neck um, as far as any additional uh, piercings other than earlobes on females and only one set, you're pretty much out of luck. Um, if it becomes visible under the uniform, you're, you're out of luck. And if you already have these piercings when you join, you are supposed to let them close. And let's move on to the Navy. Not authorized while in uniform. No articles other than earrings for women uh, specified above shall be attached to or through the ear, nose, or any other part of the body. Additionally, body piercing is not authorized in civilian attire when uh, in a duty status or while in aboard any ship, aircraft, aircraft, craft, or any military vehicle while any base or within any base or other place under military jurisdiction or while participating in any organized military recreational activities. While considered appropriate by the prescribing authority under Article 721 or 01, Dash two, body piercing may be prohibited while in foreign countries. Marine Corps, basically the same thing. Um, I don't know if the Space Corps is even a thing yet. Uh, I really haven't been keeping up on it. It is a pretty good show on Netflix, if you haven't checked that out. I, I, I highly suggest that. So, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I'm sorry if I lost some eye contact there during because I was reading and uh, uh, I'm terrible at reading aloud usually, so hopefully it came across. It comes down to this. When in doubt, ask the people in charge. Same thing with work, same way, th way with any type of uh, profession. You should always ask the person in charge when you're getting anything done visible. The other thing is, is I hope you found something useful here. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you found it helpful. Um, also, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We usually post between three and four videos covering body piercing and tattooing a week. Um, and hit the notification bell so that you're always notified when we post something. Also, uh, if you are in the military, um, and have experience having piercings, uh, please share your experience. I know a lot of people are probably finding this video because they're going into the service and they're kind of trying to figure out what is going to change and what they're going to need to do. So sharing your experiences with either going into the military with pre-existing piercings or getting pierced while in the military could be helpful for them. Check out our merch store. If you like swag and you like great t-shirts, t-shirt designs, and various other forms of merchandise, uh, there is a shelf below. Also, there's links in the description. Till next time, here's hoping only piercings heal with ease. And without a single issue, and if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a beautiful, uh, wonderful day. Go out, do something for somebody else, make yourself feel good, and make this planet a better place. See you next time.